great adventure stories from England. Robin Hood. A long, long time ago in England, the area around Sherwood Forest was ruled by an evil man who was known as the Sheriff of Nottingham. He was a selfish man who did not care about the happiness of his people. He took away the animals they depended upon for food and made them pay very high taxes. But there was one man who was brave enough to stand up to the sheriff. His name was Robin Hood. And along with a growing army of men that lived in Sherwood Forest, he fought to free the people from the cruelty and injustice of the sheriff and his soldiers. Sheriff of Nottingham heard that Robin Hood had interfered with the work of his soldiers, he was furious. But even though Robin had stopped him once again, he was confident that his soldiers would soon capture him and put an end to his mischief. <laughs> that Robin Hood thinks he's pretty clever, but we'll see just how clever he is when my soldiers capture him and stop him for good. One day in the forest, Robin met a high-spirited friar who challenged him for the right of way over a bridge. Robin was impressed by the courage of the brave friar, so he asked him and his awesome friend Little John to join in his struggle. With the addition of Friar Tuck and Little John, Robin's band of men was ready to protect the townspeople. Please, please, mercy! No. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. 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 After stopping the sheriff's men, Robin and his merry band rode off into the countryside in search of others in need. Chasing away the sheriff's men that were bullying the defenseless villagers, Robin and his men returned to the people the taxes that were rightfully theirs. There must be some way to capture this Robin Hood. Sire, we must find a way to trap Robin Hood. He must have a weakness. They say he loves archery to a fault, sire. That's it. We'll have an archery contest open to all comers. He won't be able to resist that. He'll come to us. <laughs> the finalist will now shoot until one of them shows himself to be the clear champion of Nottingham and Sherwood Forest. You will all begin when given the command by my officer. There were contestants from all over the land, but none of them looked like Robin Hood. Shoot! Five left! The 
archers fired and fired until there were only two contestants left. An old man with a white beard and a younger man. He must be here somewhere. He couldn't resist a contest like this, but where is he? You will fire after the trumpet sound. with no ordinary old man. Robin Hood in disguise. I'll soon find out, and if it is... Here is the winner. He says he is a common tinker. That man is Robin Hood. <gasps> what are you doing? <laughs> You've found me out.
And from that day forward, there was peace and happiness throughout the kingdom. All of the people were forever grateful to Robin Hood and his merry men of Sherwood Forest. of Aladdin's magic lamp, and it comes to us from ancient Araby. Long, long ago, there lived a young boy by the name of Aladdin. Aladdin's father had died and left him and his mother very poor. But Aladdin was a cheerful lad, and he promised his mother that better times lay ahead. Hello! Hello! Is this the home of Aladdin? Why, yes. My name is Aladdin. Why? When Aladdin opened the door, a most strange fellow appeared. So, you are little Aladdin, huh? Let me introduce myself. I'm the brother of your dear departed father. Why, I'm your long-lost uncle boy, and I've brought something for you. Waha! And there's more of where that came from. The next day, Aladdin's newfound uncle invited him to go with him to pick up more treasure. As they walked across the hot desert sand, Aladdin couldn't help wondering why his father had never mentioned his uncle's name. Very strange. Little did Aladdin realize that this wasn't his long-lost uncle at all, but a wicked magician. Oh, oh, I wonder what evil trick that cunning magician has up his sleeve. Uncle, where are we going? Up there. Huh? How strange to find a mountain like that out in the middle of the desert. Ah, ah, ah. Aladdin asked the magician what they were doing in such a strange place. The magician did not reply, but instead sank to his knees and began to cast a spell. Ah! Suddenly, the large boulder on top of the mountain began to move. Ah! 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 Hey, where do you think you are going, boy? Do you think you can outrun my magic? Help! Help! Let me out of here! <laughs> You are not going anywhere until you've done one little chore for me. See that hole over there? I want you to squeeze down it until you find an old oil lamp. Oil lamp? That's right. The hole's too small for me, so you'll have to fetch it for me. Understand? What do you want with an old lamp? That is none of your business. Now get going. I'll use my magic and turn you into a doggy. Or maybe I should turn you into an ice cube and leave you out on the hot sands to melt into oblivion. Ah! 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 Wow, this thing is really deep. <sighs> ah! Ah! It was pitch dark down there, and Aladdin was scared to death. Wow! Suddenly, glowing in the light of an oil lamp was a mountain of jewels and gold. Yippee! Yippee! Yahoo! Yeah! Yippee! Yippee! Aladdin loaded his pockets with as much as he could carry and started back up. Whoa! He's got it! Hurry! Hurry! Give it to me! Hurry! Not till you promised to let me out of here! You must be kidding! I can't let you go now that you know about the treasure! Now give me the lamp! Right now! Ouch! Ouch! Oh. Oh, what a headache. I'll show that little brat. I'll fix him good. Oh, no. Me, me, no, no. Oh, no, that wicked magician has sealed Aladdin oh. in that dark hole forever. That magician was so mad at Aladdin that he stormed off forgetting about the magic lamp. Oh, no. What am I going to do? I'll never get out of here. Aladdin suddenly remembered the lamp the magician had wanted so badly. He began to rub the dust off when... Ah! 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 
Yes, master. Your wish is my command. Ah, get me out of here. Ah, get me out. Ah. I shall obey. Yeah! In no time at all, Aladdin was back home. And thanks to the genie of the magic lamp, he quickly became the richest man in town. And of course, he shared it with his mother. All they had to do was wish for a big new home and presto, it appeared. And when Aladdin wished for new clothes, he was suddenly clothed in the finest silk sewn together with golden thread. Yippee! Yahoo! Aladdin couldn't have been more happy. When Aladdin saw the Sultan's lovely daughter, it was love at first sight. Woohoo! Wow! Aladdin could think of nothing else but to make the princess his wife. Oh, oh. oh princess. I love you. I love you. Aladdin's mother knew she had to find some way to bring the princess and her son together. So she gathered up a magnificent bundle of gold and jewels and went to see the Sultan. And the Sultan saw all the gold and jewels and heard how much Aladdin loved his daughter. He quickly consented to the marriage. <laughs> Aladdin couldn't have been happier. When he heard the news, he quickly rubbed his magic lamp to call forth the genie so that he could order a magnificent palace to be built for his new bride. The entire city was invited to their marriage party and the young couple were very happy indeed. <laughs> Aladdin may have outsmarted me once, but we will see who has the last laugh. <laughs> Several days later, while Aladdin was out of the palace looking after some business, a most strange traveling lamp merchant to appeared. Lamp to dread? Who will trade their old lamp for one of my new ones? That's right. You're all for my new lamps to trade. Suddenly, the princess remembered that old dirty lamp Aladdin kept in their room. Aladdin had never told her his secret, so she thought he'd be happy to trade his old lamp for a brand new one. <laughs> Master, your wish is my command. I order you to carry that princess away in her palace to a far distant land. I will obey. Oh! Oh! Aladdin was heartbroken. Huh? He was left yeah. with nothing. <laughs> Aladdin searched the city until he found someone who had seen the genie carry off the palace. He then quickly set off to search in that same direction. Finally, after many long and lonely days, he found it. couldn't believe her eyes. Aladdin motioned to her to keep oh. his appearance a secret and threw her a small pouch uh -huh. of some sort. Place this sleeping potion in the magician's drink. The magician was in the mood for a celebration. The wicked magician gulped down glass after glass of the sleeping potion. Yeah! The sleeping potion was beginning to work. <laughs> What's this? The magician is so drunk he thinks that Aladdin is the princess? 
Bridges, oh, come here. Oh, my dear. <laughs> yes, Master? I want you to take that magician and send him so far away that he'll never find his way back. Yes, Master. And that is the story of how Aladdin used the power of the genie of the lamp to rescue his wife from the clutches of the evil and wicked magician. And Aladdin, the princess, and their genie returned home where they all lived happily ever after. The Spirit in the Bottle by the Brothers Grimm. Many millions of years ago, long before animals or even plants had appeared on the earth. The world was inhabited by a band of evil spirits who roamed the land and a choir of angels high above in the heavens. Spirits. I'd like to throw them off in jail. Something must be done. All those in favor of rounding up the evil spirits, say aye. Aye! In no time at all, the angels had rounded up every last spirit. But now the problem was where to keep all of them. The angels just couldn't keep them locked up in chains like that. That would be too cruel. That's right. The angels shrank all of those evil spirits and plunked them into all the bottles, barrels, and jugs they could find. When the evil spirits had all been safely hidden away, the angels scattered those bottles and things all over the world. But that was so long ago that even the angels have forgotten where they scattered all those evil spirits. So be careful. One could be in your neighborhood right now. I wonder what's inside. Ah! 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 Not so very long ago, a very poor woodcutter lived alone in a dark forest. The woodcutter worked from very early every day to very late every night, doing his best to make enough money so that he could put some savings aside. The savings were a part of the woodcutter's dream. He wanted very much for his only son to become a doctor. But that was quite expensive, and it cost the woodcutter every spare penny he could make. But then, one day... Father, I'm home. Huh? What are you doing home in the middle of the week? It's not a school holiday, is it? Huh? No, it's not a holiday. I flunked out, that's all. Flunked out? Oh. Looks like I won't be becoming a doctor after all. It's good to be home. But... That means all that money I worked so hard to save has all gone for nothing. Don't take it so hard, Father. Maybe I just wasn't meant to become a doctor after all. Don't worry. I'll be all right. Maybe I'll just stay here and become a woodcutter like you. Nothing wrong with that, is there? The son was too young to understand how disappointed his father was. Woodcutting was backbreaking work. He didn't want that for his son. He wanted him to become a great doctor. Respected by one and all. Hey, 
Father, wait for me. If I'm to become a good woodcutter like you, I'd better start to learn right now. Let me try it, okay? I don't think you know what you're getting into, son. Why, you've never had to lift anything so heavy as a sack of flour in your whole life. I don't think you're ready for this. Why don't you try looking for a city job? Don't worry about me, Father. I know this won't be easy at first, but I'm not as soft as you think. Just give me a chance to help you, okay? Well, the father was right. Woodcutting was a lot harder than it sounded. You were right. I don't think I'm going to make it as a woodcutter. Not enough brains for school or a strong enough back for work. Don't worry about me. If it wasn't meant to be, it wasn't meant to be. I'll find something to do. Maybe I could become a juggler in the circus. Juggler in the circus? If you'd just spent a little more time on your books, you could have been a doctor, you lazy good-for-nothing. Have you ever seen such a happy-go-lucky boy? He truly believed that if he just waited long enough, he was sure to find his true destiny. Help me! Won't somebody please help me? Who? Help me, won't you? I'm over here! Who is it? I can't see. Where are you? I'm over here at the foot of this giant oak tree. Get me out of here, won't you? Hurry, please. Huh? Oh. Oh. Mm. Oh. Huh? I wonder what this is. Hey, get me out of this thing, won't you? What are you waiting for? Why, it looks like one of those evil spirit bottles. Of course, the woodcutter's son had never heard the story of the angels and the evil spirits, so he saw no reason not to let it out. Oh, no. Oh, I haven't been able to stretch out for a thousand years. One, two, one, two, one, two, one. You gave me such a start that I fell down and bumped my knee. Who are you anyway? Why, I'm one of the most powerful evil spirits in the universe. Sure want to thank you for getting me out. I've got quite a treat for you, you know. Really? W what is it? It's very special. I'm going to eat you for breakfast. What kind of treat is that? Remember, I'm the one that got you out of the bottle. You have bottle. to remember that I'm an evil spirit. You didn't expect me to be nice to you, did you? If I did that, I couldn't call myself evil. It's a great honor to be eaten by someone as powerful as me. boy could think fast when he had to. He had a plan. What's the matter with you? You're not being very polite, you know. Huh? I know, I know, but I just wanted to be sure you're a real evil spirit. What? If you can just prove to me that you're a real evil spirit. Well, just what kind of proof would it take? To tell you the truth, there was so much smoke and fog, I couldn't tell if you really came out of that bottle. If you were to do it one more time... You call that proof? That's no problem at all for an evil spirit like me. Here, hold on to this and I'll be right back. Whoa! Okay, get a load of this! Okay, that should prove it! Ouch! Hey! What's going on here? If I let you out of there, you'll eat me for breakfast. You had your chance, but I outsmarted you. I guess you'll just have to get used to life in the bottle again. If you let me out, I'll give you a real treat. And this time I promise. Okay, but this time I want it before you get out of the bottle. You won't trick me again. Hmm. Well, okay. I'll give you my walking stick. This old thing? What in the world would I do with a walking stick this big? But that's not just a walking stick. See that button on the side? All you have to do is push it and the stick will cure any sickness in the world. It really will. I promise. But this is much too big for me to carry around. How about something smaller? Do I look like Santa Claus or something? Well, if you'd rather stay in the bottle... Okay, you win. Try turning that button to the right. Like this? 
It was just as the evil spirit promised. So the woodcutter's son decided to test the stick's healing powers on his own bruised knee. Well, it may be an evil spirit, but as long as he's kept in that bottle, he knows enough to tell the truth. There! Now let me out like you promised, okay? But if I let you out, you'll just go back to your evil ways again now, won't you? Of course! What else is an evil spirit to do? I've had a thousand years to think of a hundred new dirty tricks. Looks like you'll have to stay in the bottle. What? But you promised! Hmm. I really didn't mean to lie, but at least now you know how it feels. I can't very well let you out of there just so you can start playing dirty tricks. Now, can I? I. Wait a minute! Don't leave me here! You promised! Thanks to the evil spirit's walking stick, the woodcutter's son became a very great doctor. There wasn't a single sickness or disease in the world he couldn't cure. His waiting room was busy from morning till night, and the son soon became rich enough to pay his father back. Okay, let me see that foot. There you go. So that is the story of the spirit in a bottle. But just remember, there may be one of those evil spirit bottles still lying around in your own neighborhood. So be very careful in opening and playing with any strange bottles or cans you might find. An evil spirit might jump out. <laughs>